This is the first time I've seen a blow cart. I had no idea what it was all about until I got there and it was explained to me. Even researching it, there's mixed things and it's called different things and you don't really know what it's about until you get there. The wind scares me. I've tried windsurfing and been swept out to sea. I've tried kite surfing and been dragged across the beach and into a parking lot. It's the one element you just don't see coming. Let's hope today turns out a little bit better. The night before I'd been thinking about the scared of the wind thing, but I didn't know if it was a great angle to take and I don't want to be this little scary cat or whatever, but then I thought it would make it personal and, it, and it's something nice to relate to and I thought it would be a nice getting over my fear insert. Now the sport dates back many centuries. Correct. It, it's, uh, they've sort of tracked it back to, the, to China. Three centuries ago they were using four-wheeled carts with sails as a means of transporting goods across their land. Well, we don't have three centuries, so how long is it going to take for us to get up and running? It's going to take us about five minutes to get us all sailing. We're going to go as fast as a kite, but it's going to be in, in, but in I'm five safe. minutes. I'm safe. safe. The last time someone said that to me ten minutes later, you know what he said? Call an ambulance! <laughs> That's what happened the last time someone said that to me, so uh, step me up. You know, I've got this really stubborn thing where if I'm scared of something, I will do it over and over again until I get over that fear, no matter how much damage it does to my body. This looks like an airplane buckle. It is an airplane. And I feel like if I take off, I'm going to go with this thing, so it's not off to a good start. The zigzagging thing. Oh, shit. Whoa! It was completely exhilarating, and it was like we were chasing, the storm was coming, and it was very dramatic, and the wind was blowing, so it was pretty cool. Such a roll until the camera came. <laughs> As Sham had found on a bicycle, so Jonathan discovered here. Where there's crisis, there's also opportunity, and he took it with both hands. Once you've made friends with the wind, it's a completely exhilarating experience. <laughs> I wish someone had told me about the zigzagging thing before. If someone had told me that, I would have been friends with the wind a long time ago. And I'm a sucker for anything that makes me feel like a child again. And this is one of those things. The difference between this Jonathan and the one before is certainly notable. Here he was having fun. It goes back to what we've been saying all along. If you're having fun, you want to deliver the best link because you're in the moment. He's using the camera like he's talking to his audience. Yeah. He's sharing that experience yeah. with him. I feel like I'm there with him on the blow cart. I feel like I want to go try the blow cart. The highlight of the week was my closing link. Like I, just from what I learned, from how I managed to pull it off, from overcoming a fear, it was just a perfect insert for me, I think. And that closing link just going around and around and the camera was following me and I was just saying things and I don't know how they were coming to me but they were coming out smoothly and at the same time I'm trying to control this foe of mine that I've been so scared of, this wind is just taking me in the perfect circles until I finish my link and then it just takes me off into the distance and I don't know how it worked out that way but it was great. Jonathan, we look today at the material with the blow carting. And what we notice with you is when you do your formal introductions to what you're about to be doing, it's very stiff and there's strange pauses and you deliver it in a sing-song type of way. But then when you're actually involved in the action, what you're doing is excellent. So well done. What you did with the blow carting was really good. Thank you. Thanks. Yeah. On the more serious side, Jonathan, when you guys did the challenge of going down and mountain biking, you actually came back without your buddy. The person, that you were, the person that you were paired with, which happened to be Lauren in this case, right? Yeah, you see, the thing about the buddy system, which I also explained to them, is you have to know that you are a buddy. I didn't know I was supposed to be a buddy. I wasn't told about that. So you didn't know she was your buddy? No. Hmm. I had no idea. If you didn't but I know... But taken responsibility. Anyway. Yeah. She came off the mountain. She was obviously exhausted and upset. And she leveled this accusation at you. You knew you were my buddy. <laughs> <laughs> you know? So how come she thought that? I don't know. That's why I said at that point, the thing about the buddy system is you kind of have to be told that you are part of a buddy system. Because it's just, it's a serious point for us because one of the things about you is that you're endearing to women who watch you. Mm -hmm. So if you were to be one of the final three, mm -hmm. I would put you there because you would appeal to the women in the audience, the mothers, who think this is a wonderful son who loves his mm. family. Mm. And now next thing, 
you're looking after Lauren, you're looking after a woman, and you sort of abandon her, and that sends yeah, out yeah, a bad no, message. Yeah. It's like it's almost like you're being a hypocrite, so that you say yeah, to yeah. us, "Oh, well, I'm wonderful. I love my mother. I love my family," yeah, yeah. and then Lauren disappears, and you don't immediately go and look for her. Yeah, yeah. It's sort of that's a negative. Yeah, there should have been more communication. It wasn't. There wasn't enough communication there on the mountain.